Another toddler was raped in India. The police swooped in quickly and apprehended the culprits. China says it won't stop the freedom of navigation in the South China Sea. Plus, authorities arrest an ISIS hacker in Malaysia and an update on Typhoon Kopu. These stories are coming up next. This is the Asia Brief. Greetings and salutations, my excellent friends. Great to have you here with me today. My name is Steve Miller on this Monday morning, the 19th of October. We're going to go ahead and get started with yet another tale of rape from India. On Friday's Asia News Weekly, I mentioned the disgusting rape of a four-year-old girl in India. Well, things got worse over the weekend. This time, a toddler a girl two and a half years old, was the victim. The rape occurred in the Indian capital of New Delhi, and as before, thankfully, the police were on top of the situation. Two teens were arrested on Sunday for the crime after the baby was found unconscious and bleeding in a nearby park. The narrative of the story is that the boys abducted the child during a 10-minute power outage while she was playing outside her home. In a separate incident, police also announced the arrest of three men, for raping a five-year-old girl. Seriously, what the hell is going on? These are disgusting crimes that showcase a complete breakdown of societal norms. Students amassed to voice concerns in a protest over the weekend, and rightly so, with some residents accusing the city's government of a failure to protect women and young girls. Arvin Kedrawal, Delhi's top elected official, deflected blame and laid it out squarely on the head of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He said the police were failing in their capacity to protect. Kedrawal went on to say that crimes were on the rise, and that control of the police should be transferred to local authorities, which does make sense. But the notion that local control of the police is somehow a magical cure-all, well, it's a bit naive. This is a problem that must be rooted out at its core, a subculture that believes that there's simply nothing wrong with committing these heinous acts. Even now, the worst that can happen to these rapists is a 20-year prison sentence. Whether or not the police are under local or national control is irrelevant. Action needs to be taken to crack down and provide ample security. The perpetrators should be terrified of the consequences of their actions and face fates far worse than a meager 20 years behind bars. They need to be made examples of, and never see the light of day again. Things in the South China Sea are sure to get interesting as the United States prepares for its much-anticipated trip through the area to test China's resolve and commitment to the freedom of navigation. This weekend, Chinese General Fan Chanlong said, quote, We will never recklessly resort to the use of force, even on issues of sovereignty, and have done our utmost to avoid unexpected conflicts. End quote. Fan pointed to the recent construction of lighthouses on Kuratron Reef and Johnson South Reef in the Spratly Islands, saying that the installations have already begun to provide navigation services to all nations. According to the United States and other nations, UNCLOS, the UN Convention on Law of the Seas, prohibits claiming territory around artificial islands built on previously submerged reefs. Therefore, the United States Armed Forces will sail or fly wherever international law says it is allowed. Beijing disagrees and denies it has militarized the islands in the South China Sea, warning it would not stand for violations of its territorial waters in the name of freedom of navigation. Right, because building islands out of nothing with radar arrays, 3,000-meter-long landing strips, and anti-aircraft installations isn't a militarization of those facilities. Malaysian Defense Minister Hishamuddin Hussein said that the United States informed him of their plan to sail in the area, but noted his concern is that of unintended accidental unintentional incidents on the high seas, especially between two major powers that, at the end of the day, will end up affecting smaller nations like his. Rand Corporation's senior defense policy analyst Mark Kozed said that it was unlikely that any conflict would erupt between the United States and Chinese forces, but rather from a third party in the region. In essence, it isn't so much that we need to see what China does in response to the United States after it sails through, but how Beijing reacts should a smaller Asia member state 
attempt to repeat the voyage. The United States Justice Department charged this weekend a Kosovo citizen with computer hacking and handing over personal information of more than 1,300 U.S. military members to the Islamic State. Malaysian authorities arrested Ardit Farizi on a U.S. warrant and the Justice Department is seeking his extradition. U.S. officials claim Farizi went by the hacker name, the directory using LeetSpeak, and ran an internet hacking group called the Kosovo Hackers Security. In August, the Islamic State sent out a tweet that said, quote, We are in your emails and computer systems, watching and recording your every move. We have your names and addresses. We are extracting confidential data and passing on your personal information to the soldiers of the Khilafah, the political system that implements Islamic policies, who soon, with the permissions of Allah, will strike at your necks in your own lands. End quote. It isn't clear if any Americans were harmed as a direct result of the stolen information, and Farizi faces up to 35 years in prison if convicted. Super Typhoon Kupo, known locally as Lando, made landfall in the Philippines this weekend, bringing with it strong winds and torrential rains. Thus far, the powerful storm has claimed at least one life and displaced more than 20,000 people from their homes. Unfortunately, the typhoon has slowed to a crawl and could last for several days over the northern Luzon area. Weather forecasters predict that in some areas, nearly 600 millimeters of rain could accumulate, which amounts to about 23 inches. The downpour also exasperates the chance for landslides in the nation. Well, my friends, that'll do it for me on this Monday. If you're in the Philippines, please, please take every precaution and remain safe. And if you have any thoughts about the stories covered in today's podcast or anything else I share via social media, please let me know your thoughts. The Asia Brief is a special feature of the Asia News Weekly Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, please share it with your friends. And if you haven't, subscribe. Subscribing is free, and when you do, the next episode is delivered automatically to you. You can subscribe on our website, asianewsweekly.net, or in your favorite podcast application. You can also keep up with more news from the region by following Asian News Weekly on Facebook or Twitter. And if you have any comments, questions, or feedback, be sure to drop us a line. That email address is podcast at asianewsweekly.net. Thank you so much for joining me, and until next time, remember to be true to yourself and to always be awesome.